Howdy y'all. Hey, welcome back to Building an Expedition Camper. We are going to dive back into finishing the air system that we started in a previous video and go over some of the details on finishing up that system for the chassis. In the air system part one, I showed you the four gallon extreme outback air tank that I installed and I'm also installing this second air tank, a five gallon aluminum air tank by Air Max. Aluminum just simply to save some weight, significantly lighter weight, and another five gallons give me nine gallons of total air capacity on hand to really fill these 37 inch tires. Hopefully pretty quickly uh, with that not only air supply but also the extreme outback continuous duty high output air compressor. You can see also in this uh, video here, this section of video, uh, down in the lower left there behind the shock, the Cruise and Comfort air conditioning air condenser that is just free hanging right now. Uh, I have not quite finished installing that. I will show you a little more in a future video of the installation of that and the frame I made to support that up on the side of the frame rail on, on that side there, uh, which is an excellent position. That was where the exhaust did come out and also where there was a extended subframe cage that I had removed and so it made room for this air conditioning condenser which is really great I'm excited for that system and back to this air system I'm still installing it but I and I also have a water couple of gray water tanks off to the side there uh, that I'm about to install and they get embedded within this aluminum Z rail or Z track or Z angle which works really well for not only installing this air tank in a way where I can access the bolts all from below to be able to remove it should I ever need to remove it or replace it. Also the same for the water tanks to be able to support those up in there but the Z-Rail also cradles each of those gray water tanks so they cannot move from side to side and so I only have to really support them by uh, their weight and also to make sure they can't slide forward which and in, in when they're finished, they are so tight in there that they cannot slide forward or to the side in either way. I went ahead and ran airline as well from the tanks that goes up to each front corner and each rear corner. So I'll have air outlets uh, at each of those corners to be able to basically fill each of the tires simultaneously or all four of the tires simultaneously or any other connection there. Um, the airlines also interconnect the two tanks. And speaking of airlines, one thing I noticed with these uh, type of airlines is to make sure you get a really clean cut. And if cutting with scissors, often that's not the case or slightly angled, so make sure to cut with a good tool, one of these actual airline cutting tools like I'm using right here. And so that way you get a really straight cut on these airlines and, and they do make these tools for different diameter airlines. Uh, and that way it'll seal up well these push to connect fittings, which I'm using, which are really easy to use. And this ensures that you get a good tight fitting with those push connect push to connect fittings and that way you don't have any leaks as air systems notoriously generally do have leaks somewhere in those systems so i'm trying to prevent all those by doing things right here and so this is right here i'm just routing these connections up to each of the corners i'll show you more later in a future video of what i'm going to provide the ports i'm going to provide in each one of these corners and then also one thing here to point out is a stainless steel electronic valve down there sitting on the fuel tank. That'll uh, be my electronic valve to empty the gray water tanks, which can be done by switch from anywhere that's an appropriate place to be done. That's a one inch line. And you can also see the one inch microprobial gray water line, that gray literally water line that's off to the right there just below me. And that runs down the passenger side frame rails all at the same elevation between the three different gray water tanks. So that way the water essentially will flow between all three of the gray water tanks and eventually out to that drain which sits down below uh, uh, at about the just above the axle in in between there and the fuel tank you can see here the extreme air compressor fitted in and it's air inlet and great filter that it has it's easy to uh, change out uh, should that when it when that needs to be done it is suspended by the uh, two inch fiberglass U channel which actually is the same yield strength as these aluminum 90s and Z brackets that I'm using uh, in, but also provide some uh, vibration dampening and su support for as it runs to remove that. Same with the EPDM 
uh, synthetic rubber strips you can see going down the subframe rails uh, that'll give a little bit of cushion between there the subframe and the camper box that uh, is that is going over it and those EPDM synthetic rubbers are they're oil and gasoline and diesel resistant they are ozone resistant they don't break down with sunlight or water or really degrade in any way over time uh, they're very durable and an excellent product really for using this. They're also dielectric, so they won't let, let any electrical current flow through from the subframe to the camper body, should that ever happen with a short. And they also will uh, prevent uh, thermal transfer between the two, or at least reduce that significantly, and, and as well as reduce the vibration significantly as well. Um, here you can see more of the fiberglass U-channels that hold up the Extreme Outback air compressor and also their air tank and the fittings at the top. One thing to note is that with oh, the airline uh, that are run throughout the chassis here, there are no low spots. It is run essentially at the same level or dips down to the outlets at each corner, but in no way does it dip down before those outlets at the corners. So there's not a way for water to pull up before it gets to the outlets, and so that way it can always drain out at the outlets or at the drains in the tank itself, and hence why the outlet for this air hose from the tank is at the top of the tank, so that way it does prevent water from accumulating uh, into the air lines, or at least reduces that. Fortunately, I was able to have help from my friend here installing these gray water tanks into there, which I'm going to go over more in my next video and also how to spin well the fittings on. And uh, that was really great to be able to have his help to get these in there as it was definitely a two-person job to be able to use four hands to get these strapped in there and, and su supported and suspended. So we're able to get all that done and therefore basically the subframe and the chassis is completely all ready for the camper body to go on which is going to be coming up in a video very soon. So thanks for watching and look forward to sharing more with you shortly.